Um, I know um, we all have been touched one way or the other by COVID. Um, hopefully, um, and I think we, in the scheme of things, we've been we've been blessed in some respects. Um, so those of us um, who have things to be uh, thankful for, let's let's go for it. And Tom, I'm glad you're on the men. And uh, uh, Marco, is Morella back in action now? She is back in action. She's been back in action for several days now, maybe a week or so. Yeah, just um, like I said, it just took her, took her for a long, you know, it took her a long while to get over it. Plus, then her husband had it, and then their son, who's still living with them right now, um, you know, he had it. So it's just uh, they had like so many of the symptoms. Um, thankfully, no, none of them had like extreme respiratory issues that required you know more advanced care. So very thankful for that. Beautiful. Well, you're right, something to be thankful for. Um, all right, guys, well, let's get going uh, on our meeting. Uh, Pete, if we can start off with uh, development project updates. Sure. Um, 1000 Silas Dean Highway. Uh, we had been working with a, a uh, South American company that was going to process and distribute garlic. Um, and uh, AJ had been talking to them, negotiating with them. Apparently they found another site in Enfield so that just, um, we were informed of that just after your last meeting. Um, and then the only other thing to report is, believe it or not, there is another self-storage interest <laughs> who contacted me um, a couple weeks back about the property. So uh, I sent them the uh, new zoning regulations and uh, I have not heard back from them. Uh, so that's 1000 Silas Dean Highway. Uh, 207 Church Street, uh, the auction uh, uh, house, uh, we did meet with the uh, owner, uh, with the manager, and with Mark to uh, discuss um, how to assist, if possible, moving a project forward there. So um, I believe the property owner is um, uh, reaching out to a couple of people, and um, I'll follow up with him um, shortly. There is a, uh, a specific interest in the property. I also talked to them, so we'll see uh, if uh, anything good comes out of our um, conversations, but uh, we have started that dialogue and uh, expressed our interest in seeing what we could do to help with that um, project. Um, 245 Main Street, I think I reported at the last meeting, I did meet with a, a developer who is um, uh, taking a look at the project to see if the numbers work. I have not heard uh, back on that. Uh, 341 Jordan Lane, um, I mentioned at the last meeting that there is a, an engineering firm doing some analysis of the property uh, to see what uh, development potential exists there. I spoke with them yesterday. They are looking to maybe come into planning and zoning for a pre-application review sometime in February. So that seems to be uh, kind of progressing farther than any previous um, project we've had uh, in the past. Um, What's that, the nursing home, Peter? Yes, that's the nursing home. Uh, uh, that's George Oikel for anyone's information. George is our, our PNZ uh, representative now, uh, taking Dan's place. Um, Peter, Peter what, can you, what would you they say be if doing? that's a, oh, no. I'm sorry. Someone what type of a business? For which for which um, property? Jordan Lane? Jordan Lane. Yeah. Uh, they're looking at it for potentially residential purposes. We'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, it's. Um, still early and still preliminary. That property is um, in a flood zone. Some of the existing building is in a flood zone. So that, um, that, that complicates uh, the development potential um, to a certain extent. Um, they're not insurmountable, but it just puts another level of, you know, another barrier in, in the way. Anything else, Peter? I think those are the highlights. If anyone has any other questions about other things, but those are the main things to report. Peter, how's the uh, owner of, uh, of Berlin Turnpike, Peter, and not? Okay, yeah, thanks, George. That's a good one. Um, the corner of um, not in Berlin Turnpike where that uh, car sales uh, business was located. Uh, if you recall, that was also part of a larger redevelopment plan at one point in time. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, denied uh, an application to have it um, used again as a, an outdoor car sales display uh, property. Um, I have talked to the owner's representative. 
uh, he may be coming into planning and zoning to talk about all of those properties and what, what, what the planning and zoning commission is inclined to allow to happen there. But um, nevertheless, the commission did deny another used car dealership at that location. Peter, that was a denial of unanimous denial. I have never, I haven't seen a denial on you unanimously in 10 years of 15. And it's one of the uh, few denials that the Planning and Zoning Commission has actually issued in the last couple of years. So, um, Peter, that might, that, so that, that whole property on the corner may need to be on our back on our radar screen to see what we should be doing to work with that property owner to maybe come up with a larger plan rather than just simply reusing the individual properties. So um, I'll, we'll, we'll keep you in the, we'll keep you in the loop if um, he does want to, he, he wants some guidance from planning and zoning commission as he continues to think about what to do there. Can you explain Peter what uh, the property owner owns, which properties he owns or the businesses that are currently there? Sure. So it's obviously the used car site. It's also the uh, motel, uh, half of which is not being used behind it. Uh, and then the um, and then the former gift shop. Uh, he does not own the package store, but it's basically the hotel behind the package store, the, the former gift shop, and then the, uh, the former gas station used car dealership. Remember, this is the entryway to the town, Peter, or exit. Important site. A little bit of both, yep. George, I propose that we put a toll uh, for people exiting <laughs> Weathersfield on that corner. I don't know if you want to take a look at that. <laughs> Maybe we can raise some revenue as they're exiting. You better uh, check the governor out on that. Okay. Um, Pete, I think, you know, the, the, the good news is, you know, I'm all about at-bats. You know, we've got um, virtually somebody looking at different levels on every property or virtually every property on our radar, if you will, in town. You know, um, none of these are deals, but again, unless you get at bat, you don't, um, you don't have anything uh, to swing at. So I think it's very positive for what we're doing. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see that. Um, any the other comments on uh, project updates? Yes, how about Rite Aid, uh, Peter? The old Rite Aid? Yes, um, Gary and I met with, um, with Mr. Knight, it's some time ago um, when there were rumors about uh, the potential tenants in, in the building. It's been quiet since then. However, uh, the property is being surveyed. Um, and uh, one of the things we talked with him about was splitting, because it's one big property. So the Rite Aid building and the adjoining plaza are a single property, uh, which creates uh, obviously he wouldn't be able to sell it so uh we had we had a conversation about maybe investigating splitting it off there were some ownership issues uh but apparent i got a call from a surveyor the other day that they are um surveying it with the potential to split it off which might open it up to other um development possibilities peter houseman will uh Joe Sewell will be opening up on uh, Berlin Turnpike. And what's the status of the restaurant across the street? Uh, the 1773 Berlin Turnpike, I think is the property you're asking about that we uh, we did close, just so you know, on the facade uh, for that uh, last, was it last week? Uh, last week. Um, and uh, so he's pretty much completed. Uh, Tough Shed is the business that's uh, going in there. They just filed an application with planning and zoning, um, and that'll be heard in February. Uh, so, so sometime after that. Um, as you guys know, we voted on facade improvement for that uh, piece of land for Sulo and the before and afters, Pete, that'll be a good one uh, for your wall because it really does look a lot better there. Uh, it was money well invested mm -hmm. uh, by us. Um, any other questions on projects? All right, let's move on to salute to business for 2020. That seems, uh, it does say 2020 there, doesn't say 2021. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, where do you, I mean, I'm, I, I'll, I'll leave it, I'll let you start, Pete. Sure, uh, we, were, uh, we were held up 
uh, by the uh, trophies. Uh, we have a big pile of trophies here now. So uh, they just came in um, last week. So uh, we are coordinating um, with the winners on how we get those to them and uh, working with them on their um, award recognition. We talked about the video. So we're working through all of those uh, as we speak, but we're holding off until the awards actually came in. So the good news is the awards are here and we will be um, getting those out the door probably next week. And then hopefully the videos will start to come in uh, shortly thereafter. We wanted people to actually have their awards as they do the videos. Pete, what was the, are we gonna, have we told them to use that particular platform? Yeah, uh, we are, we're recommending it. I don't know that we can, you know, mandate that. Some people have used other things for their social media, but um, I think if, uh, once we get the files, we still should be able to. I have I have been coordinating with Jesse, our social media guy, but he's going to clip all that stuff together in some organized way once we get them all. Would it be? Have we sent an email out to all the winners to kind of say overall what our game plan is? We do want to recognize them. This is I the don't know. I don't think all of them have gotten it, but we've we've sent out a bunch of them. So, okay. I just I I just if they're just going out now, I just if that particular platform is extremely easy to use and to patch things together. Um, so I don't know if there's anything that should come from us to all the winners to, to talk about using that particular platform and just saying, or this is the platform we desire to you, you to use. That way we can, it's universal and Jesse won't spend, trying to splice and dice a lot of these different video platforms can be a challenge. I've been down that road. I just don't, and I don't mind drafting something up to the winners and, and maybe CCing Jesse on that, unless you think that's overkill. No, it's fine. We have a we have a letter, a template that we've uh, used every year to let them know about the awards and what they've won and that kind of thing. It wouldn't be that difficult to just put a simple, you know, line or two in there about that particular product. So I'll uh, shoot you the if you want. I can shoot you the the draft letter. Okay. And then you can um, see if you wanted to insert or if we want to take some things out. There's, there's plenty of things we're going to take out because a lot of it was basically, okay, here's the time, place, uh, and uh, location. And since that's not uh, in there, um, th there should be room for that. And do you, uh, are we, for 2021, are we planning, you know, ho hopefully we're at the point back where we're at the country club and we're having that great event a year from now or 10, 11 months from now. Um, are we going to... Uh, recognize these people at that event, or would that be um, uh, we on to newer pastures, other uh, other uh, award winners? I, maybe if if the video turns out well, we can show that as part of the festivities rather than doubling sure. up on the on the awards. Um, obviously, we have time to think about. We have booked the country club, and we are putting it in the town calendar, the date, and everything. So. Um, if all goes according to plan, we, you know, we should be back in there by next, by this December. So great. Any questions uh, from every, anyone on the salute to business? Okay. On to the town guide and count. Speaking of the town guide and calendar, Pete, um, yep. are we at the printers? Are they, are you there? Uh, we have the, uh, we have the draft and uh, there were some edits that were uh, required. Um, so we are trying to finalize that and hopefully by next week, it'll be finalized and probably the following week will be printed. So, uh, we're still working through the logistics of how we get it distributed this year. I'm waiting to hear back from, um, Mr. <clears throat> Emmett from the school system to see if we can utilize, um, the schools to get them out as well. Um, but I think, unfortunately, we're going to be doing a lot of, uh, driving around with boxes of calendars to different locations so that people can help us get them out the door. So um, we're happy to do that, but it's just, it's gonna be different than just leaving them at the library, the community center and town hall and letting people pick them up. So uh, we're just gonna have to kick up uh, the outreach um, a little differently than previous years. Okay, any questions from the group on the town guiding calendar? Great. Let me know if I can help distribute. Yeah, anyone who wants to, once I, once I get them, I'll send out an email to everybody. And if uh, you can help um, by 
picking up some boxes. We we'd love to we'd love to have your help. Okay, on to business incentive. So you want to um, you want to talk, Mark, about our meeting about the tax incentive um, program and kind of where we are and how we left, or do you want me to do that? Um, I'll chime in. I have my thoughts. I'd rather uh, I'll let you lead and I'll chime in. So we had scheduled a special meeting uh, a week or two ago uh, to discuss uh, our much discussed tax incentive program revision. So I did prepare some research uh, for um, other communities um, and what they're doing. The statutes have changed pretty dramatically since we adopted the program back in 2004. Um, so we went through a process of identifying um, how we compare to other communities and what we might wanna do to uh, change our policy. The policy would ultimately have to be presented to the town council. It's ultimately a town council decision. Um, we discussed some additional research that uh, you guys wanted me to do, uh, particularly with some of our surrounding towns, Rocky Hill, uh, Newington. Um, so I'm still waiting to hear back from uh, Rocky Hill specifically. I know they have granted several tax incentives recently. Um, so once I get that and I put that together, we'll schedule another meeting so we can keep, keep this moving along. Um, we did see an uptick in interest in our tax incentive program last year when you compare it to previous years. So clearly um, there's an increasing need for us to uh, be able to provide uh, incentives, particularly since the state of Connecticut is changing their policies as it relates to business assistance and it's less likely that our businesses will benefit from any state programs. So it becomes even more important that we have a good incentive program in place uh, to assist when it's appropriate. Um, I think that's that's a summary of I think where we where we left off with our last meeting. Yeah, I um, I know we're um, uh, Councilor Martino or ex Councilor or whatever you are, Mr. Martino these days. Um, we had mentioned uh, with regards on looking at other communities um, uh, around and that there were some um, our needs and our issues may not be similar and in some cases could be dissimilar. Um, uh, or similar, I should say, uh, to Westfield, Newington, and Rocky Hill, uh, and that obviously we want to look at all the other communities, com communities that we're computing, uh, competing against, especially with those with corridors similar to Southstein Highway, um, which obviously we'll, we'll chat about here uh, in a second. Um, it was one other point I wanted to make. I can't remember what it was, but um, the, oh yeah, the disparity or the differences between some of the 10-year deals were too aggressive and, and kind of coming into numbers that made more sense. I think the good news is, is there's a lot of stuff out there for us to call information from other towns. And you did a good job building that uh, information. Um, are we at a point, are you still waiting for data from those other communities, especially Rocky Hill before we convene again? And yes, yeah, okay. I, I, um, I'll, I'll follow up again. Um, I, I, um, Ray Carpentino is the economic development uh, guy in uh, Rocky Hill. So I'll just, uh, it could have gotten lost with the holidays and everything like that. So I'll, I'll send them another email as a follow-up and see what um, what they're willing to share. Okay. Um, item E, which has been on our agenda since 2014, um, <laughs> uh, the STEEP award. Um, I don't know how much we really wanna, you wanna share about that or not share about that at this point, Pete, um, uh, or Gary, maybe you wanna um, step in, but, um, what are it, the money is still there from what I understand that the state hasn't requested it yet. I know we're still looking for a, a viable project. Um, I know that uh, talking to the at the auction house owners uh, and uh, and other properties that you had mentioned, Peter, that money is earmarked for 1000, but could be potentially modified for other projects. Um, uh, Gary has been doing, I don't know what dance you're doing um, Mr. Manager on keeping them the, the state at bay, but I guess it's a good one so far. I know there, it, there is a ticking, ticking sound with regards to how long that money is gonna be available. Do we have any 
has anything been intimated by the state uh, or have you got any uh, uh, foreboding emails or phone calls? You're on mute, Jared. You know, you would think after 10 months of this, I'd remember to unmute myself. Um, we've been very creative in how we're handling this. I, I think the, the representative at the state almost laughs whenever he gets an email from me um, and rolls his eyes, but he's being very considerate. Um, there were more than the 2014 grant. There were other grants that he was looking to close out and get information on. So we've been slowly putting those together and I've been leaving the 2014 kind of on the back burner. Um, no, and, and the, my contact knowingly understands why I'm doing that as he knows I'm desperately trying to get this to a place where we can go back to OPM and, and uh, grovel uh, and ask for a reallocation of the funds. Um, and it has to be for the right project. Um, so we're, we're being creative. I can't say when they're gonna pull the leash on me, um, but so far I'm giving them the other things that they're looking for. So my hope is that they're not looking to sweep that money. They, because they, um, the elected officials are back in session, I do have concerns the closer it gets to the end of the budget year, the easier it is for them to sweep money. Uh, but right now we're trying to give them some of the fallback funds from leftover projects that are completed and, and, um, and closing out. I know that I had mentioned it before and there might have been a response or maybe we're, we're not at that, but is there an opportunity to, to take that money in and keep it in the facade improvement um, program if we get really pushed up against the fence? Is there a chance for that, that it could be that that's our most successful program and you know we've got great data to support it? Is there, is there an option for that or am I, um, Am I barking up the wrong tree? I got the sense, and Peter, you can jump in too if, if you disagree, but I got the sense that it, if we had a pipeline of projects that we were gonna push out and it was just a matter of, uh, we just haven't gotten to that pipeline, we could make the argument, but I'm not so sure how well it holds water if we said, well, we will use it. I just can't tell you when. Um, we are um, going through with the CIP process to request some funds. So there might be some validity there to say, you know, can we keep some of it for this? But I don't know if they'll let us keep all of it. And I, I think they're looking for a project. Right. Um, yes, yes, they want us to, they want us to spend it and close it out. So however we do that, uh, the fastest way, I think they would be very receptive to that. Okay. Gary, just saying. Um, I did speak with Bryce at um, the Charles, and he has a plan, uh, the beginnings of a plan. And he was going to talk to you, Peter, about starting the process of a application. So um, if we could get a couple more of those, that might work. It's, it's a good point, Judy. Uh, and I, I know that there's something going on on Main Street with Lenoche. Um, and I don't know if, if that's... That's not, um, I don't know if there's an opportunity for the 200K to be utilized there. I'm just talking out loud, mm -hmm. uh, but it, we're betwixt in between. We can't really promote, you know, if we go to the market and say, hey, we'd like to really promote um, more facade improvement, like you said, if we had a pipeline, but we're, our pipeline is very short. We don't have, I don't know if we've got an audit yet and what we do have available left um, in the coffers for the facade improve pro improvement program. Do we, we got a number yet? Or are we still waiting for accounting to share that? Uh, I'm still waiting for a final spreadsheet, but uh, it's been indicated that we have approximately what I thought we had, which is, you know, 55 to 60,000. Right. Just a ballpark number without quoting a specific number. So um, I'm still waiting for the uh, confirmation uh, calculations on that. But so, um, Judy, uh, is, since you seem to be the ambassador to the Charles, you might want to reach out to Bryce and say, you know, um, there's not a lot of money left in that till. If you've got a project, we recommend that you really, you know, get I together. Did. With I talked to him yesterday and he said he has a design already. And I said, get it in, fax it to Peter. But okay. Peter, it sounds like you did not get anything from him. No, he did. He, we talked at the end of the day last, 
yesterday. Oh, he's got great. a he's got a landscape architect, and he's going to uh, have more detailed plans with some estimates and things like that uh, shortly. So, so could we not uh, take that as a project that's proposed and you know put it in, get it wrapped into the the amount of money that we already have? <clears throat> Well, he's got to go through the process like everybody else and, yeah. you know, submit an application. We can't just um, unilaterally. But if we could say we have this project uh, when Gary goes back to the state, that might be a good thing. Yeah, I think there's a couple of projects out there that, you know, if they all want to go forward at the same time, we we sh we, we could easily spend the 200000 So, um, but once again, they have to yeah we're reprogramming this money and the state needs to agree to it so if we don't come to them with anything solid it hasn't been approved through a planning and zoning or an official process or anything like that they're going to say we can't reassign it until we have that and this is not the type of project like uh, we we have a number in the pipeline i would love to i would love to lock one of them down i don't be happy if it would be the charles you know, I haven't seen, I don't know what he's planning, but um, I'd love to support existing expansion is great too. Peter, Gary. just just for ha-has, if you've seen what he's looking at, does it fall within the guidelines of facade improvement? Um, it falls within a, um, it's similar to a project we funded in the past. So there's a precedent uh, without getting into the details. It's, okay. not, it's not a straightforward facade project. Okay. I'll just, leave, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, I thought that might have been the case. Okay. Yeah. Peter and Gary, uh, because it's 200,000, I mean, with the Charles, it probably wouldn't be more than 50,000. We could give them to at least 150. If that's a viable project, could we look at the under 150? Because I've been looking at the Silestine revitalization plan, maybe to take the other 150 and apply it towards expanding out the lights from the town center with more decorative lights to use up the balance of that money not to lose it and do something along the Silestine highway like you know our two businesses have been asking us to do i mean it's a viable project and it'll expand it and get part of it done and we don't lose the money we can get it done right away especially we're going to be looking for lighting for wilkin hill pretty soon with that project comment gary your thoughts, I mean, I, I, I'm just kind of thinking all, all things are possible. My concern is, it, you know, OPM has got to like it, right? So they, they have funded some of that before in different phases. That's part of the closeout material that I'm trying to get to, uh, to the contact there to show that we've closed it out. You know, all, all those are, again, beautification. I, I think if you look at the original intent of what we're looking for, it was really a job creation um, you know, business expansion feel. Um, I, they may be willing to do it. They may not. So it, it's all about, you know, we want to put the best foot forward and the best pitch that we can forward. You know, that could be one of the options. I wouldn't turn it down, but I think they're going to be looking for, we want the taxes and we want jobs. Mm -hmm. That's why you got the money. What does this do to increase taxes? What does this group do to increase jobs? State taxes, not, not local. I think they're looking for the bigger picture. Personally, I like beautification and streetscape projects, but they're, you know, they don't always turn the wheel. We've got to balance the two. So, I mean, you know, we got a state senator who kind of likes, you know, beautification. He came across us for Walcott Hill. He might yep. be able to talk OPM into giving us that one too. Yeah. Martino, we'll use your influence, please, and let's get this done. All right. Can can I just ask a question about um, the um, the steep funding? Is that's a part of the discussion with two hundred seven Church, correct? Uh, yes, we have um, we have dangled that out there, um, depending on the timing and details. And the project waiting, itself. Yeah, we're waiting for those details. Because I I would I would be in favor of of you know, whatever we can do to jumpstart that or the Masonic Hall. And if it's a $200,000, $200, that might 
move the needle a little bit. Just yeah. so you know, Tom, uh, we had a uh, conversation with the owner um, of the auction house of 207 um, and uh, gave him some direction on what we need. We're trying to, we, we think it would be a great project, but again, we're at the, um, you know, our timeline is the, is the timeline that the developer has on getting the proper information. And they're at this point, they're woefully short on what they need uh, to provide the state with regards to making a case for the money. But we have put peanut butter with chocolate and, you know, give, giving the developer the, uh, some um, references on who to talk to on, on getting the data put together for that project. But we are being really proactive. We had a meeting with that owner just last week. Um, so we are moving forward. And then I agree with you. I think it would be an ideal spot um, to get something done. Um, anything else on the steep award? Peak capital improvement program? Yes, it's that, uh, it's that time of year. The capital, uh, the CIAC, uh, which um, reviews all the capital improvement projects is meeting next Wednesday night. Uh, I did submit a request for uh, two different things. I submitted a request for $50,000 to uh, go into the facade improvement program. And I also asked for another $100,000 to be used for, uh, we're gonna have to review our plan of development in two years and it takes literally almost two years to go through that process. I've also, uh, we also have to do an affordable housing plan the state is mandating each community uh, prepare an affordable housing plan and then also um, it's it, I wanted some funds to potentially go towards whatever analysis we decide to go forward with for the Silas Dean Highway so I asked for a hundred thousand dollars to be uh, used three ways uh, it's potentially it potentially could be the same person who does the study for us um, and we get some economies of scale by doing that so those are the two requests that I've submitted and I will um, be discussing the details of that next Wednesday uh, with the uh, CIAC. And I'm sorry, Pete, if you had mentioned it, when is the, uh, when is the meeting with the, when is that meeting scheduled that, uh, for CIP? I'll, it's next Wednesday. I believe it's at five or 5.30. Um, if you want to participate, I'll forward you the uh, the invite. I don't know where I am on the agenda. I've asked to be up at the front. I've got a planning and zoning meeting at seven that same night. So, okay, I I may uh, maybe traveling on Wednesday, but if you could send me the information on that, that'd be great. Just for if I can be there, I'd like to at least have an ear on that. Sure. Any I other questions send, on uh, CIP? I did, I did give them the. Um, a, a lot of details on the facade program and how many projects and you know so they have a, a nice they have a nice presentation on that so um, hopefully that goes a long way. Great. Anything from the commission? Okay, uh, on to Salstein Highway. Um, I'm glad that we've got uh, Gabe uh, and Cindy here with us today. Um, we have a um, an exploratory meeting is what I'm calling uh, it on Monday uh, next week at 5.30. Um, and, and, and anybody else here who would like to join us, the more the merrier. Um, I, I know, Judy, you might be uh, dubious on that day, but uh, Tom, Cindy, um, and Gabe have all said that that date works. It'll be a Zoom meeting um, this Monday at 5.30. Uh, and, and we're calling it exploratory, just so you know, Gabe and Cindy, you know, at this point, it's not an official subcommittee or anything at this point, and we don't know what direction it's going to go. And that's really what I want to get together to find out how is this thing going to, how is this group going to, what's it going to morph into, and would, you know, where would it fit or, or would it fit under the town umbrella? Is that the right fit for it? And that's some of the stuff that we can talk about uh, on Monday of next week. Um, I am working on uh, basically a quick worksheet or an outline uh, for Monday's meeting. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to get it to you before the meeting, um, but uh, to basically um, get everybody's thoughts in writing on some key points that I would like uh, the group to address 
coupled with kind of a big open remarks section on what we're looking to accomplish. Uh, I'd like to get it in writing and I'd like once we have it done for everybody who's at that meeting to share that data obviously with everyone so we can really kind of identify what are the sweet spots or hot zones or hot buttons I should say uh, with the group and then match mm -hmm. that with, with everything else that it needs to match up with um, both politically, economically, et cetera. Um, and again, that meeting is um, Monday at 5.30. And Tom, you said you were good there, correct? Yep. And Cindy and Gabe, that's still a good date for you? Great. Um, yes. Is there anything um, that you guys wanted to chat prior yes. uh, about? Um, yeah, go ahead, Cindy. I was just saying yes, I was on mute. Oh, okay, great. Um, so the, the date is good. Um, uh, I apologize that I had to do some unexpected traveling, but things have settled down a little bit and I'm looking forward uh, to that meeting on Monday. And again, um, these meetings can, um, I wanna keep everybody's time as tight and I want to make them as effective and efficient as we can. And that's why I'm gonna start with this guideline uh, between now and then. Gabe, anything to share? Um, one, thank you for putting it together and then I heard, which is great news, and I'm not familiar with how it works, but it, Peter mentioned that um, he was requesting potentially some funds to take a look at um, some sort of improvement or development on the Silasine Highway. <clears throat> and I know we're com you're coming up to some uh, budget uh, times. I just didn't know what that entails and uh, kind of curious about that. Sure, my, um, my thoughts were just to make sure depending upon where this um, Silestine Highway effort goes, that we have some resources if we need to study, design, you know, whatever, whatever it might be uh, that comes out of that process. I think, um, you know, we have the plan. It's now dated. I think we need to, you know, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves in terms of the meeting, but I just wanted to have some resources if, it, if it's deemed warranted um, to be available. To, to go forward with whatever it is we might might need. It, th this would be more for studying, planning, analysis, rather than physical improvements because 15,000 or whatever it might be isn't gonna go that far, but it could help us to uh, make sure we're, we've got the right blueprint to go forward. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you very much. I mean, I think to, to me, like I said, is, is that this is not an over, and I know a lot of the conversation is uh, business at hand and what we're referring to is very long-term, but uh, the fact that you, know, you need to start somewhere with some amount of money and uh, having just this conversation with Peter requesting it and then having the meeting on Monday, um, it, to me is a, a fabulous start um, because I, I, I think it, it, it's nice to hear. That's it. Um, Thank you for the words, Gabe. Sometimes when I, you're, I'm sorry, go ahead, Cindy. Um, why don't I interrupt? Go ahead if you wanted to say something. No, please do. Well, I mean, I think this is great, great news, and I'm glad to uh, hear that it's viewed as a priority. Um, I understood that um, to really to go forward, I guess on Monday we'll kind of understand more of the building blocks uh, because we would need, I guess you need to understand the, char the traffic characteristics of the thoroughfare and so on but then we also need a plan. So I, I don't know if we're only budgeting sort of the study that really pre is, um, we're not gonna fund the, a, a kind of a plan for next year, which means it would be off another year. Um, so, uh, or maybe not, I don't understand enough about it. Again, I don't wanna get too much offline. And I guess the other thing is, I, I just a question, um, this will, no doubt be a tight budget year. So if you're budgeting 50,000 for facade improvement and $100,000 for all the plans, you know, if we get less than that, what, what would be the priority? I, I would hope that we would make the plan or the building blocks to, toward a um, Silestine Highway improvement a priority. Yeah, the, um, the, in the email that I sent you guys, it was the, the, there was a link to the older plan back from 2004, is that right, Pete? The revitalization, South Team? 2006. Eight. Oh, six? All right. It was in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, I know things have changed, but a lot of things haven't changed uh, since then. And I think studying that will be a good place to start. But you're right, Cindy. I mean, uh, the economic side of it is always going to be something in play. But um, I think Monday will begin the discovery on what we're looking to do, because maybe what we're looking to do budgetarily at first, it fits within money that is achievable to get, uh, or maybe it's not. These are the things that we need to flesh out. Because you'll find out that on, on these meetings, I'll be very pointed on, you know, if, if and you know what is legitimate and what is not. And you're either going to love me or hate me <laughs> after uh, Monday's meeting. But uh, it, it's we want to. The idea is to find that balance, right, on what we like to get done and what we can actually get done. Um, and that's really what I want to drill down on. Um, but I think we've got we, we don't have a lot of financial capital, but we've got a good start of human capital. Uh, with this on Monday, and we'll start there. Okay, Mark, do you mind? I don't, um, based on this, is that I'm just going to sign off. Is that, that's okay? Um, no, you have to stay, Gabe. I'm sorry. <laughs> you... <laughs> so I, um, anyway, once again, I um, the, the conversation of having the dialogue, I appreciate it. I think longer term, um, it, it, the Silestine Highway is dated, and the improving the marketability of it, um, you know, having a conversation is a good one. So, um, and uh, I'll, I'll speak to all of you on Monday. And, and Peter, thank you for making that request. No problem, no problem. Okay, thank you. Take care. And thanks uh, for putting it on as a priority. I really look forward to um, meeting with others and, and uh, discussing it and moving forward. Great, thank you, Cindy, for your words. Uh, any other questions, guys, on Southstein Highway? I uh, just one, Mark uh, and Peter. The uh, business survey is that is that in the mail yet? Uh, no, sorry. It's um, okay. you and I and Mark probably need to just have an offline conversation about the Southstein Highway questions and making sure we we all agree on that. So um, I don't know if you have time, whether it's a quick call later this afternoon or maybe tomorrow, so that we can put the finishing touches on that. Tomorrow is dicey for me. Um, okay. Tom, do you have any time directly after this meeting? Uh, you know, I, I'm fine. I don't even know if I need to be a part of it, but that that's fine. The um, it's it's mostly just about, it, it, you know, anything we do going forward. It would be helpful to get that input from the business community and even from the you know, later on, maybe from the the uh, population of the town, and that will guide us as to how much effort we want to put into it. I agree, uh, but you had proposed some questions. Now they're going to go yep. on Survey Monkey. You just want to make sure the Survey Monkey is very, very. It's great um, because it's you know it's digital and it goes right out. And it's easy to respond. We just don't want to be. You don't want to have too many questions. You don't want to make the monkey tired. Um, so we, uh, you proposed some questions um, on there, and I just didn't know if you had a um, pecking order on the questions that you submitted um, or not. So. Um, if we could just, why don't we just get together? You know what? Um, we we're, we're, we've been working on this for quite a while. Why don't we find a date where we can get 15 minutes to be forward the actual, the finished uh, questionnaire that we have along with Tom's and let's you and I and Tom just meet very quickly and get that hammered out so we can be done with it, if that's okay. Is that good, Tom? Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other, um, so you would mention that, Tom? Okay. Um, Tom, may I just report, Mr. Manager? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to kind of grab some stuff for a moment. A second. I had it open, but I lost it. All right. Well, so we'll start with, while well, I'm waiting for that to come back up, um, just came from the meeting right before this is with the health department. And some of uh, the emergency operation colleagues here. Our numbers, uh, last week's report said that our numbers for the month of December were actually equal to the nine months prior to that, from March going into December. So we were sitting around 1,400 plus or minus positive cases. Um, that number in the last seven days has jumped 300. Uh, from one week to the next, we are now at seven, 1,774 uh, cases. Our positivity rate is 61 uh, cases per 100,000. 
Um, if you recall, the state came out with a ranking system to determine uh, like a red, yellow, um, and like an off yellow uh, coloring to show what the levels were. Uh, anything over 15 cases per 100,000 was considered red. Again, we're four times that, we're at 61%. So our numbers have seen a very, very rapid trajectory um, heading upward in the last seven days. Um, and then the weeks before that, it was well over 100 each week. Um, so we're still in the midst of this. We're seeing the repercussion and the daisy chain effects of Thanksgiving and um, the holidays in December. Uh, and we're assuming that for the next two or three weeks, this is pretty much going to be standard procedures for us. Um, at the same time, uh, town hall does remain open and by appointment only, um, except for tax payments. Tax payments are, uh, you don't need an appointment, will allow you to walk in between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, without an appointment. However, you can also, as a reminder, you can make those payments via uh, online portal, going into a people's bank or going to people's bank, as well as just dropping it simply in the mail or in the, the drop box out front. Um, and that was 61 per thousand, is that what you said? 61 cases per 100,000. So the state has come up with a way to calculate it so you can per balance it across. Okay. Yep. You take your average daily rate for the last 14, divide it by your population, and then multiply that by 100,000. Okay. So our numbers have steadily increased. Uh, we did have a week where it dropped, maybe about 30 cases, and then the next week it went up. And my assumption is it was just a delay in um, uh, how quickly they pushed the results off the table for any given seven day period. So there might've been some backlog and then it all, it all built. But either way, a, a case increase of 300 in a week is the greatest we've seen. I think prior to that, the highest was 230. And then prior to that, it was like 90. So it's a pretty big discrepancy from one week to the next. Um, it's, it's not, as we said on the phone, this isn't going away soon just because we have a vaccine that's pumped out. The numbers that I'm seeing are something like the equivalent of 40,000 vials per week for the state of Connecticut. Um, within each vial, there's about five shots. So, and that's just for the, I believe that's just the Moderna vaccine. That's not the Pfizer one. Um, you know, so that's 200,000, but we're looking at, you need somewhere around a million people um, over 75 and above in emergency responders. You have more than a million people statewide that need to get two shots. So if you do the math of 200,000 shots a week, and a million people, you're looking at several weeks before the rest of the population starts getting, population 75 and under starts getting vaccinated um, with their first dosage, let alone their second. So um, we're not through it yet. We are optimistic, but we're still keeping all precautions in place in terms of uh, operation. Um, the Social Justice Coalition had their, I think we're calling this the sixth meeting this past week. Uh, we're moving through what I believe is a great progress. Some people are, um, myself included, sometimes getting a little frustrated with, you know, we want it to move quicker, but we try to remind people we've got to approach this delicately. We also have to walk before we can run, or in this case, crawl before we can run. Um, there is a process going on where we're trying to get individuals to all get at the same level and understanding of knowledge and how our minds actually interpret information and how it comes in and you know, how some people feel, you know, use, use an emotional response versus an intellectual response or a moral response versus one that has direct action related to it. Um, so we're taking it all in stride through kind of a real mental exercise. Um, I will say on a positive note, I don't think we've had fewer than 93 people on any one of these um, six um, uh, workshops that we've had. Uh, the downside of that is when you have 90 to 100 and 120 people on these things is how do you have a, an effective level of communication to make sure we're reaching everyone to the point where you need to. So we have been breaking out in groups um, and each group uh, is led by a steering committee member who kind of has a, a set agenda that they have to follow so everyone's learning at the same pace and then we come back together and we kind of discuss uh, the focal point from each group. It seems to be working um, and at the last one, we did a survey um, or, or meeting 
that took place in December, we put together a survey that tried to narrow down the focus, those the kind of the key focus points, creating categories. And then the last one, we sort of came up with these two overarching categories for the first topic. The first is creating a community engagement process so that the town residents, businesses, whoever participates understands what we mean when we say racism exists everywhere. It doesn't mean the town of Wethersfield is racist. It means that people have um, potentially a misunderstanding or a mis miscommunication, bad nomenclature, however you want to do it, of using certain words that somehow are misinterpreted. Um, or that some people just frankly um, may have hints of racism and not understanding that. Um, and so we want to create that level of engagement with residents to understand that you might not believe what you're saying or doing has negative effects, um, but they do, and here's what they are, and let's let's talk about them. And frankly, it's not a one-sided conversation. It's both sides talking about, uh, it's more than both sides, it's multiple sides talking about what their truths are, how they view something, um, uh, what lens they're viewing it through, and how we can all try to view it through a similar lens and be more considerate. Um, and then the second one is establishing safe spaces so that we can have this level of engagement. So whether you're in a school, um, whether you're in a school or whether you're an educator providing services to the school or speaking with colleagues or your community, uh, you're a business, you're a, an employee of the town, or we have uh, regulations within town that might inadvertently have a negative effect, not just discrimination in the terms of racism, but also on ADA, on, um, on immigration, on um, a variety of, of potential topics. Um, and I think it's been a very worthwhile um, although, although it's, it goes slowly, there's a rationale as to why it goes slowly. So enough about that. There's another one coming up in February. I encourage you to go on the website and sign up for the next one. Uh, and we'll try to get anyone who joins up to speed. Uh, um, Gary, I, um, thank you for that. I, I wanted it. Was the meeting last night or the night before? I've honestly lost track at this point. It was, two, it was Tuesday night. Okay, yeah, Tuesday. Um, um, can... I was on the uh, the Great Elm, and the, it was up on there, but the link to the meeting wasn't on the Great Elm. I'm curious if Jesse could get, I didn't know where to go, frankly, because I wanted to sit in, I haven't listened to any of those meetings, I finally had an opening. If we could get that listed somewhere, or, or where would you go uh, to get the link for the Zoom? Uh, yep. it's so just... you have to register in advance. Um, okay. It should be on the website, and I can check to make sure it is on there. Um, yeah, so if, if you go to the website under announcements, there's one that says Weathersfield Social Justice Meetings. Actually, oh, I can't share because I'm not the host. Um, but yes, there is, a, there is a, a link under announcements for the Social Justice uh, Coalition. You can also just type in Weathersfield Social Justice Coalition and it should bring you to one of the pages. Correct. That does it. Um, okay, now I've lost my screen again. Hold on. Okay, um, we are entering budget season. Um, uh, Peter kind of alluded to the fact that there's a component obviously for an ask for money, but I'm starting to sit down with department heads to go over what their needs are for the next year. Uh, the intent is by charter, uh, April the first Monday in April, I give my presentation on the town manager's budget, what I'm looking at that I believe the town needs to operate. Uh, from there, it gets to go to the council and the council gets to beat me up. Um, just kidding, Pat, please don't beat me up. Um, but the, uh, but the council gets an opportunity to kind of review it and we'll go through it and, um, we'll get their thoughts and feedback. And then obviously budget workshops, public participation, opportunities for the residents and businesses to chime in on what they feel strongly about funding and what's important. Um, and to hit the deadline, which is technically set by charter as May 15th. However, the governor's executive order last year had extended it. I do not know if that will happen again. My assumption and presumption is that it won't. Um, but the legislature is also in session. So ultimately, I don't know. They've got to put their biannual, biannual budget, can I say that word, together um, so that we understand what, what we may or may not be getting this year. Um, touch upon a couple quick things. I talked about them being open. What about some good news? Let's find some good news. 
Parks and Recreation Winter Online Program brochure is still is out and available for individuals looking. Um, we're working on the spring one. We do anticipate that uh, certain events will take place in the spring or activities will take place in the spring. They may be limited due to COVID in terms of how many people can sign up for what and participate. But our hope is that as the weather starts to turn warm, we have something similar to last year where numbers start to dip, we create the social distancing platform and we're able to open things up again. Um, and maybe the combination of that and the vaccine will, will help um, expedite that. Um, the Social Youth and Senior Services has been awarded a federal grant for $125,000 over the next, uh, per year for the next five years. Special thanks to the council for, uh, for allowing us to apply for and go after those funds. They are specifically targeted towards um, addressing substance abuse and substance abuse prevention uh, within um, the school systems. Um, and kind of relies on existing coalitions and partnerships to, um, to really uh, aggressively and effectively address those issues, preferably before they become an issue, but also to provide supports if they've already become an issue. And frankly, this is a very large uh, grant for the town of Wethersfield. There's, a, there's only, um, I think, seven in the state that have gotten this previously. I think uh, a lot of congratulations to Erica Texera and Kathy Bagley's crew uh, for successfully going after and, and writing a successful federal grant. Um, I mentioned this at the chamber meeting, but I'll, I'll plug it here too, because there's, there's a nice mix here. But the reality is thank you so much to the business community for their uh, overwhelming support over the last few months in the food bank and, um, and for uh, special funding for programming and, and for, um, for gifts uh, to those in town who are who, uh, need the assistance. Um, you know, it's been a been a very strong donating year, and frankly, we were quite concerned because obviously people are scaling back, but their hearts have not. And so, I think that's um, needs to be uh, in every opportunity just a comment about how great it was, uh, and has continued to be. It hasn't stopped, um, but the need is continuing to increase. So it kind of is following the same uh, process. Engineering department, walk and hold road reconstruction. There is a public information meeting on Thursday, January 21st at 6.30. This is going to present, and um, Tony had just mentioned it earlier, but it's a preliminary design plans for the Wolcott Hill Road reconstruction project. Um, and that includes, a, and I've said this before, thanks to Senator Funfaro for leading the charge with the delegation. He provided $500,000 more for what's already taking place at Wolcott Hill Road reconstruction to do some streetscapes and about a million dollars for the Spring Street uh, pond, but that, that'll be a separate public hearing. Um, High Street, Highland Street pavement, um, they should be at this point moving on to um, kind of crosswalks and pavement markings if they haven't already. Um, Church and Knott Street, I see it every morning. They're still continuing to work on that. Um, it's slowed down a little bit due to some weather and some things they can't get to, but there is a failing sanitary sewer lateral. They're going to have to dig up and be in there in the next, uh, I would guess, in the next month or so. Um, they'll be back in there. Uh, and building permits are already starting to happen again for the spring, so that's kind of good news. Obviously, um, that ties into the budget. The more permits that come in, good, bad, right, wrong, or indifferent, the more revenue we have coming into the coffers to help defray costs. And then, uh, what else? I did get one. I haven't had a chance. It did go up on the website as soon as possible. I received something from DEEP. They've created a draft integrated. DEEP is uh, Department of Environmental and Energy Protection State for the state. A draft integrated resource plan for public comment. Um, it, it focuses on the Connecticut's kind of like the future electric needs for homeowners. Um, private businesses, uh, municipalities, just to figure out how to reduce some of those electric costs and to achieve what they're calling this 100% zero carbon electricity supply. Um, and they wanna hear from as many stakeholders as they can. What I thought was interesting is I just received the press release yesterday for an event that's going to take place tomorrow. No, I'm sorry, tonight. The first one was at 10 a.m. today. The second one is gonna be at 6 p.m. tonight. So they gave it to me yesterday. 
I put it up as soon as I possibly could on the website and the public hearings start today. However, there will be additional technical hearings taking place the following week. I don't have those dates yet, but my guess is those are more tech because of the name. They're technically specific where this is actually a public hearing, public comment. But that information is also available up on the town website under announcements, and I encourage people to go to it. Last thing I'll just plug is Keisha Farm. Uh, I know uh, Brooke is not on the line, but if you recall in the last meeting, we are working with the University of Hartford to further discussions of what could potentially go there. Um, they had a little quick turnover and some staffing and during the winter break, but we have two, at least two very dedicated um, students who are leading the charge. I've met with both of them. I am very impressed um, with where they are in their lives and, and how they want to run with this. Frankly, they wanted to run a little bit too far and they already had ideas of what they wanted to do. We had to pull them back a little bit and say, no, 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 it's a community process. They give us, the community tells you what they're looking for. It's your job to do the research and help guide the, whether or not it's viable um, along the way. So it's, you know, gung-ho, uh, college students who are just like, oh my God, you can do this and you can do that. And I love the inspiration that they come with and enthusiasm they come with. It's, you got to balance it with what the residents are looking for. With that, I will conclude and answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Any questions from the group? I don't know if it's actually related to anything uh, that Gary's talked about, but I just wanted to see if anyone on the call or on our meeting, um, happens to know anything more about a lot of the crime and vandalism and everything that continues to occur in our town, um, just as a matter of safety for the town. Um, I'm pretty sure every one of you is touched by it somehow. Um, it's been absolutely you know, through the roof. I, I realize that um, the, the response that either I or anybody like friends or family that we hear is, you know, people are getting slaps on the wrist, they get sent out back into the public, they do it over and over again because our laws aren't stringent enough. Um, I'm pretty sure that's probably true. Um, I don't know if there's any activity. If anyone's heard of anything new that's happening in our town, uh, a friend of mine just sent me a ring video of his door neighbor across the street, a uh, car stolen right out of his driveway uh, from a couple of mornings ago, you know, and uh, usually it's, you know, somebody leaving their car warming or, or they leave their key fob in the car, which is, you know, shame on you if any of you guys do that. So you don't want to do that. Uh, but just any activity, any anyone know anything more about that? Uh, just curious yeah. if there's any feedback. M Marco, you actually stole my uh, probably half of my report, so thank you for that. So I'll just jump right in. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's all right. Um, Thanks a lot, but, I appreciate Patrick. Yeah. So so last meeting we actually um, uh, council introduced a, uh, a letter uh, to the legislator to more or less open a dialogue uh, as to what we can do to either deter and ultimately mitigate. Uh, that uptick that we're seeing um, as far as car break-ins and other crimes. Um, there obviously it are things, uh, our justice system is not perfect, especially the uh, the juvenile system, but the goal of the letter uh, was really just to, to start looking at the problem and what we could ultimately do to solve it. Um, and I believe, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think council, uh, everybody sort of had their input as far as changes we wanted to see made. And I think there's a second letter coming for Tuesday's meeting. Yep, that's, that's correct. correct. Uh, for you guys to bat around as well, but there's, yeah, there's kind of been some dialogue on some of the changes and, and um, I think the council will have it, the intent is to have it available for council again to uh, refine it on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, Marco? Or It does. I mean, you know, again, I think it's, um, so I, I can just tell you from my own vantage point, again, through lots of family, lots of friends, I've lived here my whole life. I know quite a few people in town. And the thing is, is um, there's a lot of uh, really bad talk going on about what people want to do to these kids, right? All right so I'm sure you guys have um, you know, been privy to those conversations as well. Um, it, it could get ugly very fast with um, some people that I know are, they've you know, had it up to here, right? It's, they're well beyond their breaking point. Um, and they're not even the ones who've been impacted, to be very honest. Mm -hmm. um, what they're talking about is just a new level of vigilance that, you know, um, is beyond what any of us want to see or, or do. But I'm just telling you, it's getting, it's going to get ugly very fast with some of these people because um, they're sick of it. They're tired of it. Well, I'm tired of it too, but, you know, I don't, yeah. I've never, thankfully, I've never had anything happen to me. 
but every single one of my neighbors almost has had something happen to them. And uh, I think so. that that was the goal of us of really engaging in a meaningful, you know, open dialogue, so we don't get to that point of vigilante justice, right? Exactly. Like I, that's that's really the main goal, right. right? It's like what could we do as you know, council? What can the legislator do so that doesn't happen? So right. um, yeah. we'll see what uh, comes out of Tuesday's meeting. All right, I appreciate Marco? that. Thank you, Marco. Sure. <clears throat> Sorry, I get a lot of phone calls being retired. You know, what would you do back in the day and kind of things like that. And I really have to, the vigilante stuff you start hearing. And, you know, you, we're talking about car brakes. We're talking about stealing the cars. Um, you know, the vigilante, they want to beat the crap out of these kids. And most of these kids are anywhere from 13 to 19, 20 years old. Uh, the cops, their hands are tied. They chase them, but there's no chasing anymore. And they die it's you're going to hear an uproar that oh they were just stealing something out of the car sunglasses something like that um i don't know that there's a a, a way to say it but we we just have to there's two ways we can look look at fixing this problem one the harford area i Mothersfield's not involved in it yet but we can actually start our own it's a, a comstat where they get two or three of the cops for each town even one or two for each town around harford they meet once a week, once, uh, twice a month, and they go over the kids they know that are doing it. Because there's a group of kids, they think they have like 36 names of kids that are doing it just in our area. But it's happening in Bridgeport. It's happening in New Haven. It's happening, if you look throughout the state, it's happening. I don't, I, is, it, is it COVID? Is it, you know, these kids have nothing else to do. Uh, they're making money this way. Somebody's obviously buying some of the crap. Um, and the collaboration of all the departments, because... We stop at borders, radio stop at borders, um, people stop at borders. So it's only happening in our town, but it really isn't. So we really need to open up. I mean, maybe Gary could help that along just so we can, if we open it up to our other towns and we start our own comp stat and it's all about talking and, yeah. and let these cops get to know each other to start giving the information about this kid or that kid. And then you start seeing some patterns and with the computer aided uh, guidance, you could see where, what's happening and you yeah. start seeing stats and you start realizing what times, what days, what. So that's just my uh, thought on it. But again, stealing cars, I, I've already had my car broken into twice. Yeah. And um, yeah. one time I had a, a camera in the back seat and the key in the ignition. They took the camera. Um, yeah, I was just, just going to tell you, and I don't know it's for this whole group, right, for our commission or anything, but. I was gonna just share one last story. Uh, really a personal friend of ours in Southington, she was home with three of her children. Her, um, her mother-in-law had died. So her husband had to leave town and go to Pennsylvania. And she heard um, through the grapevine, through texting, well, not with grapevine, but it was really through texting with her neighbors because they have like a little neighborhood text. Her neighbor said, hey, make sure your garage doors are, are shut. Make sure your cars are locked. People are getting broken into right now. Like it was like five o'clock on like a Sunday or Saturday afternoon. So she, of course, went out to her garage. She thought her garage was shut. It wasn't shut. She shut her garage, um, thinking she had done the right thing. So she shut her garage, went inside her house. Um, she immediately turned on her alarm system because she's there with her three children. They live in a very nice neighborhood in Southington, too. They, um, she shut the garage door, turned on the alarm, and started hearing all this noise coming from her garage. She actually trapped two of the people in her garage. Um, the police came out, guns drawn, the whole nine yards, only to find her entire garage door was, you know, bashed out. They literally bashed their way out to leave before the cops obviously could get there to help. Um, it's just unbelievable, right? It's just so many stories of desperation. And, and I know none of the people, nobody on this call uh, likes it or appreciates it. I just figured I know a lot of you are connected to lots of people. So I do appreciate uh, both of the Pendulovs uh, with their feedback and yeah, I, we just have to, and we hope that things get better, but I really hope there's some change somewhere along the way. So, so just to kind of the, kind of to cover those topics, and I appreciate you bringing it up. I do know the council is, is very closely looking into this and wants some action taken. Um, Tom, you actually, there's some great ideas in there. And I think that's frankly what, you know, we're looking at the state legislators to say, hey, you guys have to address and research and understand your role in this. But I think that there's some local conversation or regional conversations that can take place of how we address these things at, at that local level. Um, I strongly discourage 
engagement with these individuals. If someone is breaking into your car or someone is, um, you know, if in the middle of the night, you happen to look out and someone's doing it, you want to shout to make them go away, that's fine. But we want to discourage people from engaging in any way. We just had a case actually in town. I'm sure you've all heard it, but someone decided to come out and confront these individuals. They tried to drive away in their own car that they were in. This, this uh, resident jumped in his car and started chasing them. He got halfway up the street. That The perpetrators got out and actually fired shots at him to try to get him to stop and stand down. It's, it's just not worth the life and the risk, the loss of life and, and the risk. It's a car. It's frustrating. They've hit me twice. Well, they hit my wife twice. Um, but I won't blame the victim on that one. She, um, she should have, people should feel safe that they can leave their, leave their car. And, um, but um, the reality is it's not, and um, it, it doesn't happen. So we want to continue to be proactive and obviously lock our cars and make sure our fobs are far away. Again, I'm not victim blaming. I, I don't think I can reasonably say to someone, well, it's your fault because your fob was too close to your car. Frankly, you shouldn't expect that someone's going to steal your car, but that's the reality. Um, but the, the truth is we don't want people to engage. Let them take it. Keep your personal belongings out of the car. Um, I'm not saying I'm not concerned, by the way. We need to address this. These numbers, you know, more than zero is too high, but our numbers are really high. Um, we're not the highest in the state. We're not the highest in the region, but they're higher than they've ever been. And we want to stop it, but it's not worth the loss of life or, or injury to yourself. Or going to jail because you've, you know, you've decided to shoot someone from your house. Frankly, in Tom's case, those people are very lucky. As a former sworn police officer and someone who probably still maintains their permit, they're lucky. Um, uh, they might pick the wrong house one day, but that works both ways. So I just want to, on record, discourage people from the level of engagement. I feel the same way. If I saw someone breaking through, I'm grabbing a bat and going after them. But that's what's going to happen. And, even and, I need to pull myself back and say, nope, let him go. <clears throat> that's really hard to do, but 100%. You're right. My final thought on it. I feel so good right now. I just want the group to know that I feel happy right now. And right, the, only question, the only question I have, Marco, is you know, if all your neighbors are getting broken into except you, I'm beginning to be, feel a little suspicious about you. No, it's because our car, we don't have a car on the driveway right now because my son is up at school. I mean, I'm no detective, but all signs point to Marco. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, the reality is this is a business conversation. This is an EDIC conversation. Sure it is. Crime impacts so many things. Yeah, there's a lot of frustrated people in town, I'm, you know, and I know you all know that, and some of you are on this call. So I, I realize that. I appreciate your feedback. I completely discourage any kind of violence like that as well. Um, you know, it's just, I didn't know, if, again, you guys are some great eyes and ears in the town and I, and I always appreciate your feedback. So thank you. Gary, yeah, is there, and the council's being aggressive. Go ahead. Is there a plan for education of the community? I mean, I'm not really in the loop of what's really going on. I had not heard about that incident, but, um, is there some way that all of us in different, uh, community endeavors in town can share education about what to do, what not to do, and stuff like that. I mean, I'm thinking we could post it on our, our website and, um, you know, or, you know, Facebook and. Yeah, that, that's not a bad idea. Although, I know this sounds counterintuitive. I want to be careful what we post on an economic development website, just because. Oh you no, 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 no! I didn't mean that. Like I for the town website, for the town yeah. website, there has yeah. been things in the past. Um, I know a lot of like what's happening. Weathersfield does this cute thing at, yeah. which came through the police department. Um, this, you know, it's nine a. M., nine p.m. Go lock your car. You know, yeah. take your valuables out and do this. Um, the chief and I have had conversations about how we, you know, ratchet this up a notch. And you know, my assumption is in the next week or a couple of weeks, so there'll be something. I do think education in the school would be a good idea. Um, and uh, I know Michael Emmon and I have had some conversations. I, I can follow up with him on how we roll it out. Um, Not just in the schools though, in, just generally in the community so that everybody's on the same page, you know? Yeah, I, I'm, and I, I got that from the education. I happen to think the schools are a great way. I always use recycling as an example, right? They, they targeted. They got the youth to back this idea of recycling 30 years ago, 
and there's nothing better than getting a parent, annoying a parent to the point where they do certain things, right? And now that I'm a parent, I get how annoying I was as a kid. Mm-hmm. Frankly, I'm that annoying as an adult too. Um, but the reality is if you want to change behavior, sometimes going through the kids, uh, you know, and frankly, my kids are just as bad. They walk out, leave the garage door open, don't close it, lights are on, stuff's in the car, you know, leave their bikes out, put it away, get me to put it away. So. Great idea. Yeah, I, th- I think um, I receive uh, on my email, I get town notices. I find them very helpful. I read them. Good. Okay. Are we good? I needed to go. I just called to my wife. Uh, well, I put myself on mute just to make sure that our cars were locked up um, as we're talking. But anyway, um, uh, Marco, thank you for, uh, for uh, voicing that. It was a good dialogue. Um, um, Mr. Pentelo, was that your um, report or did you have uh, more to add, sir? Yeah, I mean, in addition to that, I just, I, I wanted to inform everybody that uh, at the last meeting, we actually voted uh, to appoint Sue Schroeder as the new town clerk. So I think she'll do an excellent job and I'm, uh, I think we're all happy to have her. Great. It's a good job. Counselor, does that conclude your report? Si, senor. Great, thank you, sir. Um, we had Mr. Oyokla here, is he still with us? You're on mute, Pete. Yeah, I don't see him on the on the list anymore. As uh, just to follow up, uh, they, um, as you said earlier, uh, denied an application up on the Berlin Turnpike, which may have some uh, re- repercussions for the uh, EDIC. I'm um, just trying to think they we have an application pending for 1199 Silestine Highway, the former um, the former gym. Uh, it's been vacant for a couple of years. Uh, they're looking to put several businesses in there, a small restaurant, a dance studio and a daycare center that is uh, was continued and is going to the commission again uh, next week. Um, a couple of permits were ex, uh, extended. There was a building up on the Berlin Turnpike for a granite showroom that um, they asked for an extension of time to, to get their building permits. So I think those are the, the three main main highlights. Hey, what is going on Main Street with La Noche? Is there, um, is there something in the works there? Uh, nothing pending. Uh, there's, there's a conversation uh, with the La Noches about doing another project on Main Street. I'll just I'll leave it at that. It's still, it's still in the uh, formative stages. Got it. Um, What's going on with the Popeyes? You know, I keep seeing those commercials and I wonder when we're going to get it. You're going to have to wait and just hold your horses there. Best they, chicken uh, sandwich. I've heard they have the best chicken sandwich around. They did what get approved. They? they did get approved by planning and zoning. Um, the uh, property owners are working. Uh, I think they're going to maybe even try and start work during the winter time because they want, to, they want to put the building up. So, and once they start, it'll go up relatively quickly. They, ha- uh, they have to go through the DOT because it's a shopping center and has a certain number of parking spaces. So that unfortunately could take a little bit of uh, extra time, but they are uh, aggressively trying to get that uh, under construction. Peter, um, how much did we budget uh, per meeting for food for when we, we used to meet together? How much was each meeting? You mean? Yeah, was it a hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars? Uh, roughly a hundred dollars. What are you suggesting? Well, I th- we have probably close to a thousand dollars that we've saved. Um, there need, needs to be. We need to figure that how we can spend that and stimulate the economy. I'm not there saying it's going to get Popeyes, but Jay Gilbert's is a nice place, but it's not in Wethersfield. But anyway, I, I know uh, the the Trahan Pub would be really good with about a thousand dollars worth of wine, <laughs> a little Coke, beer. Coke I know Dolly a good supplier said. too. Cove Deli said that they've delivered to individual people's houses that are going to be participating on the same Zoom meetings. Denise, obviously we know that uh, we know what it takes to get you off mute. Just talk about food <laughs> and, 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 and you're back. Food. All right. Um, good to hear your voice, Denise. Um, heritage and tourism. Miss Keene. 
You are on mute. You're not on mute. Coming, coming. Um, I, I have nothing new to report. Uh, last time uh, we met, I think I gave uh, the information uh, about the digital s screen and um, coming on, uh, uh, what's the name of the exit uh, in Hartford, north of Hartford, Jennings Road exit. Um, so I have nothing new to report. We have a meeting on the 26th, correct, Peter? Yes. Yeah, okay. Judy, on that, the um, the company that was doing the uh, tours out of the Cove, are they still around? Are they planning for the uh, spring? Yes, I believe so. Um, yeah, and by the way, I see the truck all the time at the last house on Lower Main Street. So I assume that he lives there. Yeah. It's Captain Morgan's uh, tours. Tours and so, charters, yep. Charters, yeah. And then the... Uh, uh, the group tours, uh, sail away tours. Sail away. So or, I, I or assume boy. that they're right. going to be coming back again. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Um, yeah. In fact, we should probably do something um, once we can, once COVID is ending, we're all vaccinated, maybe have a meeting on the boat. I think we could, we could spend a thousand dollars on the boat. And get Cove Deli to deliver. <laughs> if they go to international waters, we could even gamble somehow. So, okay. Um, thank you, Judy. Um, Chamber of Commerce. I don't see Deb Raymond here. No, she was. Uh, she was at a con conflict. Uh, just the uh, probably the main thing is the um, state of the town virtual breakfast is next Thursday morning. Um, so if you can join in on that and listen to the exciting uh, guest speakers. Um, please, uh, please uh, join everybody. If you need the uh, link that you can go to the chamber website and you can register through their website. Great. Is there a cost associated with that this year? No. Okay, I have nothing to report. Uh, subcommittee reports, marketing and communications and financial strategies, Pete. Um, do we need to schedule anything? I think I uh, once, I have the, once I have the additional tax incentive uh, information, uh, I'll schedule a finance uh, committee. But I think we should have a marketing meeting I, uh, and, and talk specifically about uh, our social media efforts and what we can do to, you know, for, for 2021. Uh, kick those up uh, a notch since I, I will, we will continue to be dealing with, uh, you know, social distancing. So I think um, it would be helpful that we um, sit down, kind of look at, you know, what we've been doing and what we can do better uh, this year. So uh, uh, that's, that's probably something we should schedule sooner than later. Well, if you want to, can we try to tie in that, um, you know, the, um, when we get together with Tom, um, and we talk about the questions for the survey that is um, obviously marketing and communication. Maybe we can tie in and make that a meeting and include that in that meeting. Uh, and okay. anybody else interested in joining us, please do. But I know Tom, you're kind of, uh, you've been the yeoman, if you will, on the, on the um, social side. So it'd be good if we can maybe put those items together and schedule that meeting within the next week or so. Okay. Okay. Uh, next week, my only day that I know that I, I think I'm going to be traveling is Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Other than that, I think I'm going to be around. Okay. And I'm as free as early as Monday. Um, anybody have a chance to uh, print out and look at the minutes? Before you go into the minutes, um, Mark. Yes, sir. You skipped over other business. Oh, did I? Yeah. Uh, I just got one thing to tell everybody about. Um, Unico, you know, as in the past, has always tried to help things out. And last year during COVID, what we did is uh, the members raised money. And what we did was uh, we came up with some like gift cards at the various restaurants that people could, or tickets that they could go and get meals to help the needy get food. Uh, so we did that last year and we're still holding some money on that, which we're waiting for Kathy Bagley to tell us when the best time is to use the rest of the money to help other needy families. But we decided at our last meeting that we want to start doing something now to help promote businesses in town. And you know, one thing Italians and Unico likes to do is eat. And when we have our you know our 
our monthly meetings where we go to restaurants, you know, we get a whole lot of food. And what we're doing, and it starts this coming uh, Tuesday, is we're starting off with Vito's restaurant. And because we go there, they're one of our annual sponsors at our various events, is they're taking three of the items that we normally order from them. One is broccoli rob, white beans and sausage. The other is stuffed sole with seafood bread stuffing. And the other is sausage and peppers. And coming with it is on the sides is hot peppers, salad, bread, and for dessert, a um, uh, piece of uh, like cheesecake, all for $25. It's called a Unico special. And uh, there's gonna be something uh, that's coming out. I just got the email today. They're gonna be put, putting something on the Wethersfield Unico website. And it's basically to, and we wanna see how it goes with Vito's and then we're gonna do other restaurants. It's basically help promote these restaurants and you know get them business, you know on specific nights to help them out. Uh, so uh, I mean, in a, you know it's a cheap, a lot of food for a cheap price. And if you don't want any of those things, you can order off the menu. But it's just to draw some businesses for these businesses in town. So I'm just recommended. I mean, because the commission can't do it officially, but as individuals, if you can go out to Facebook after and when you see this out there, if you can uh, share it with all your friends on Facebook and get it around, the more people we can get out there to help our restaurants survive, the better off we'll all be. Uh, great idea. And if you can get that over to Jesse and get it up on Great Elm. A lot of people are talking about getting information on Great Elm now. So if it's not on there, that'd be a great thing to get on the calendar, uh, the calendar section. All right, I'll see what I can do to get that out there. Once I get it, I'll make sure it gets over to him. Great. Thank you, Tony. Mm -hmm. May I now go to the minutes? Oh. Any questions on the minutes? All those in favor of the minutes as written, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that, that goes. Um, our next meeting is Thursday, February 11th. That's a few days before Valentine's Day, gentlemen. Make sure you get your appropriate items uh, um, uh, put together. Um, do we have any correspondence? Oh, Cindy? Okay. Just had a, a question. I guess it goes under, under other business. A question for Peter. Um, on Follybrook, uh, across from the funeral center, um, there used to be like a uh, transmission or some kind of electrical um, substation. And that's all been torn down. I'm just kind of curious to know, is it zoned? Will it, it, will it be rezoned as residential? Are there any plans for that? No plans at all. Still owned by the um, utility company. So um, they did a, you may have noticed across the street, they did a bunch of uh, improvements, putting tanks in the ground, that kind of thing. It's related to that. So there are no plans for that property to be anything other than what it historically was. Oh, well, uh, will they rebuild it? Was it that it was old and they're going to put something else on it or they, they haven't told you? Uh, they, they did work, uh, as they said, on the other side of the street to, it's a, there's a transmission line there. So it's related to the transmission work. They didn't need the uh, structure anymore. Okay. Um, and they have no, uh, they haven't mentioned whether they might sell it or what I don't think I don't think they're going to sell. They still have utility lines there that are related to, to their. Oh, you're saying line. underground or yeah. I don't see anything there above ground. Right. Yeah. It's underground. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks. And I apologize uh, to the group. I did skip over other business. Is there any other business? All right. Our next meeting is Thursday, February 11th. Um, any correspondence, Pete? No. All right. Um, a motion to adjourn? Motion. I knew you, I was going to say, I was going to pick the Tom Penelope yeah, block. Man. You're ready to go like a half an hour ago. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, all those in favor, turn your phone, turn your computers off. I'll see you guys later. Take it easy. Great Thanks job, everyone. guys. Be well. Stay healthy. You too.